Untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at some beautiful jank with his black-green Storm the Citadel deck featuring Bolas the Citadel and some of the Storm cards from the latest Mystical Archives. And Bolas the Citadel is the centerpiece of the deck, a 6 mana legendary artifact saying we may look at the top card of our library at any time and we may play lands and cast spells from the top of our library and if we cast a spell this way we pay life equal to its mana value rather than pay its mana cost and we can also tap Bolas the Citadel and sacrifice 10 non-land permanents to make each opponent lose 10 life. So one thing you may notice about this deck is that we only have 4 basic lands, although upon a closer inspection we actually have 24 lands total, it's just that most of them are these dual face cards from Zendikar. So we've got 4 copies of Tangled Florahedron, which we can play as Tangled Veil, a tap land, as well as a Black Bloom Rogue. We've got Palaka Predation, Agadim's Awakening, which we can even play untapped as a land at the cost of 3 life, and a Zof Consumption. So all of these spells we can potentially play off the top of our library with Bolas the Citadel and in the early game we can play them as lands to get up to 6 mana to cast the Citadel in the first place. So this has the advantage that we're less likely to stop comboing by hitting a land pocket with our Bolas the Citadel, which is usually how decks stop casting spells off the top. Either they run out of life or they hit too many lands and they've already played a land for the turn so they can't keep comboing. And with only 4 basic lands that risk isn't as high in this version of Bolas a little combo and then what's our eventual win condition well it's to kill the opponent with a big tendrils of agony a four mana sorcery with storm meaning when we cast a spell we copy it for each spell cast before it this turn and we may choose new targets for the copies so if we cast a bunch of spells over the top with citadel and then eventually find a tendrils of agony on top this will not only slowly kill the opponent but also gain us more life so we can keep casting more spells with her bolus of citadel because target player loses two life and we gain two life then that's the effect from Tendrils of Agony, so it's both a way to keep comboing as well as our eventual win condition. And then the other Storm card in the deck is a Weather the Storm, 2 mana instant that gains 3 life and has Storm. So this doesn't kill the opponent but still gains us a ton of life if we're comboing, so we can cast more spells off the top with Bolas the Citadel. And it is very important that all these dual face cards we can cast under almost any circumstance. So cards like Florhedron and Rogue are just creatures we can play. Predation can always target the opponent even if they're empty handed. Agadim's Awakening we can also cast even if there's no creatures we want to get back out of the graveyard. And Zof Consumption can also drain the opponent for four so that's also kind of a win condition. So don't want to play any of these dual face cards like Hagara Mauling that destroys a creature because if there's no creature in play then we won't be able to cast it and then we won't be able to keep comboing with our citadel. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we also have 4 copies of Inquisition of Kozilek as some cheap hand disruption, especially important if the opponent is playing counter spells so we can clear a path for Bolas the Citadel, but just gives us a bit of cheap interaction overall. Then we also have some ramp cards with 4 copies of Mindstone, 4 copies of Guardian Idol, and 4 copies of Cold Steel Heart which can also fix our mana. Mindstone is by far the best one because we can sacrifice it to draw a card, so if we're comboing and we have a Mindstone untapped alongside 1 extra mana, we can put Potentially sacrifice the Mind Stone to draw a card that we don't want to cast with Bolas the Citadel. Let's say we're low on life and we revealed a second Bolas the Citadel on top, then we don't really want to pay 6 in order to cast it, and then instead we just sacrifice the Mind Stone draw a card, and then hopefully the next card is a bit better so we can keep comboing. Then we also have 4 copies of Maze Mind Tome, which is also very synergistic with Bolas the Citadel, since we can tap it, put a counter on it, and then scry one, so that way we can potentially scry unneeded cards to the bottom. Maybe we've already played a land for the turn and we hit one of our basics, we can just get rid of it with our Maze Mind Tome. Can also pay 2 mana and tap it, put a counter on it, and then draw a card. And after 4 counters we have to sacrifice it and we gain 4 life, so that life gain also very useful. 
And then we also have a new addition here from Strixhaven with Cram Session, a sorcery that lets us gain for life, and then we get to learn, meaning we either grab a lesson sorcery out of the sideboard, and we have seven sideboard lessons to choose from, or we can potentially discard a card from our hand to draw a card, which can also be useful in the middle of a combo. Let's say we cast a cram session of the top with a Bolas Citadel, and we can already see the next card down. So let's say that next card is a card we don't want to cast for free, then instead we can just discard draw, draw that card, and then hopefully the next one is a better one. And then the life gain, of course, also very useful when we're comboing with Bolas Citadel. Or we can, of course, grab a lesson out of the sideboard, two copies of Environmental Sciences, which can search for a basic land and we gain two life, so that can help us hit our land drops towards Bolas Citadel. We've got Containment Breach to deal with artifacts or enchantments, Pest Summoning to make some chum blocking pest tokens, Introduction to Prophecy to scry to draw card, Confront the Past, especially useful for taking out a Planeswalker like Karn the Grey Creator, which otherwise shuts down our artifacts, and then Mascot Exhibition can be an alternate win condition as well. And that pretty much covers the entirety of our deck, so yeah, we're just trying to get Citadel in play as soon as possible, and then hopefully combo off and not run out of life before we do so. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing Citadel, although we do have a nice mix of bit of interaction, bit of ramp, bit of card selection, so I think it's still a keep overall. And then we could Inquisition on one, I think I'll wait. And then just play Tap to Rogue. And then turn to maybe Guardian Idol to start ramping. Upon playing a Kahira deck. So it could be a control deck, we'll see. So we see Steam Vents. Now it is tempting to double Inquisition here. I think I'll still wait a turn. Play idle. And then next turn we can tomb plus Inquisition. Ooh, there's a Citadel, so let's see if our opponent's holding some counter spells. They are. Can only take the Absorb, sadly, so commits can still delay the Citadel. And then we'll play tomb. And then we need to scry towards more lands. Can also draw with the tome instead of scrying. I think I still scry here. And awakening's fine. So, probably kick things off by drawing with tome. Could also tank with idle, I don't think that two damage is gonna matter. Alright, Florahedron will play tapped. So next turn, I could cast Bolas Citadel. Let's Inquisition again, just to check that they haven't drawn another counter in the meantime. And at the very least, I can take Kahira. So your opponent's probably gonna pass with Commit up. Or they could tap out for Narset, which is the preferred play for us. Alright. So there is a chance we can combo off. Play this at the cost of 3 life, play Citadel, and start casting spells. Predation can take the commits as well. Think, let's see, I guess the fairy can also bounce my Bolas of Citadel. Hmm, this is interesting. I guess we still take the commits. Could have also taken the Wrath for what it's worth. And now we've got an interesting decision. I can keep comboing by scrying the Bolas of Citadel to the bottom, although we're not guaranteed to necessarily win this turn. And if our opponent does play Teferi and minus on my Citadel, it would be nice to have a backup. So I think I'm just gonna pass. And then proceed comboing again next turn. So Narset's gonna plus. Enlightenment begins within. And our opponent's just gonna cast a Wrath for now. Alright, that's fine. So now I probably scry this Citadel to the bottom. 
just so I can gain four life next turn with Tome. And then we can draw the Cold Seal Heart, that's fine. And then proceed to keep comboing. So we're at three, we're at one. Can play these off consumption, but we do have a Tendrils in hand still, so let's see. Play the Maze Mind Tome. If I tap these, play Tome. Play Tendrils. That's gonna gain us some life. Plays off consumption. Weather the storm is gonna gain us a ton of life. And our opponent concedes. We were gonna keep casting more spells. We had double Maze Mind Tome as well to give us more card selection, four more life with the Maze Mind Tome, so we were very likely to find another tendrils to win the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Our hands pretty weak. No Citadel, no card selection. This is also probably a mulligan. Double Agony, even if we get rid of one. Still leaves us in a pretty awkward position. So I'd rather take another mulligan in the hopes of finding a Citadel. Alright, we found it. And then I probably can't afford to keep Inquisition. Another Citadel goes. And then play Florahedron. Cold Steel Heart is going to have to name Black. And hopefully our opponent doesn't interact too much with our hands, because we're not working with a lot. Weather the Storm, an awkward draw, sadly. Opponent Mono Green, turn to Visionary, so an Elf deck but not off to a blistering start, which is what we want to see. So... Turn 3 Archdruid, however, is scary. So I'm not opposed to Tome into Weather the Storm just to gain 6 life. Could also hold this in the opponent's turn if we expect him to cast more than 2 spells. Which, you know, is not impossible here with Elvish Archdruid. This is an instant after all, so I guess we'll pass. And then could also decide to draw with the Maze Mind Tome instead. It's gonna be a Dwinnens Elite. Into Clan Caller. And our opponent's going to keep up Collected Company, presumably. So if I cast Weather the Storm now... I can gain 9 life. Alright, never mind. Opponent goes for a Growing Rights. Yeah, I think we Weather here to give ourselves more life to work with. And then we pretty much have to win next turn. So I need to scry an untapped lands. Cold Steel Heart doesn't do it, sadly. And then... Yeah, I think we gotta scry an upkeep here to give ourselves the best chance of getting Citadel in play. Idle doesn't do it. And a Weather the Storm. Alright, so I think we're dead here. And there's a Collected Company end of turn anyway, so... Probably gonna take more than 30 damage next turn. But yeah, we had 30 life to work with here, so if we did get Citadel in play, it was pretty realistic for us to win. Craterhoof Behemoth is gonna make it quick. I can cast another Weather the Storm. Although I don't think this is gonna be enough. GG's. A 
On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this? Triple Inquisition is a bit much, but we do have three lands and a citadel, which I like. So I'll try it. And then I'll probably wait a turn on Inquisition, save myself some life. Alright, Pun playing the Mizix Mastery combo deck. We'll take Thrilling Discovery. And then no need to take the Rogue just yet. So our opponent's hand is pretty bad now that we took the Thrilling Discovery. Although it just takes a Faithless Looting or a Brainstorm to change that. Play this tapped. No reason to Inquisition here, since they would have cast whatever one or two drop they would have drawn. Opponent foretells a card, so that's probably Alrun's Epiphany. Still no real reason to Inquisition. For mana, for Mystic Mastery, casting the Thrilling Discovery, so not a pretty play, but still pretty bad for us overall. So now we can Inquisition and take, I guess, Cathartic and a Looting, or we can take double Looting. I guess taking double Looting is better. Our opponent's plan is probably to just reanimate their Scholar next turn, so I don't want to put Reunion in the graveyard. And they can potentially cast Looting and then still do all their stuff in the same turn, which is a bit more difficult with Reunion. Right, opponent just Decides to flashback looting, fill the graveyard some more, maybe find an ultimatum to then flashback with the Scholar. So we get a turn here to combo with Citadel, and we've got 17 life to work with, so we better make it count. Need to find a Tendril soon, or a Weather the Storm. Alright, there's Weather the Storm, so now our main concern is hitting a land pocket. So this doesn't matter. Since we've already played a land for the turn, so finding a basic on top would be bad, but now Mace Mind Tome is definitely going to help with that. And we can also crack a Mindstone now. So I'm liking my chances. There's the Tendrils, and that's game. Storm count is 11. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. Managed to beat uh, Mystic Mastery deck onto the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't have Citadel. We do have... Double Mindstone for Ramp and Maze Mind Tome, but the two Storm cards are mostly blanks, so I think we take Mulligan. And this is better. And then Weather the Storm can go. Alright, so we've got a two lander, we've got Citadel, bit of Ramp. Cram Session might discard Citadel here, unless we suspect a counter spell for the first Citadel. Inquisition can also have a look potentially. Although I think I still prefer playing Guardian Idol here. And then next turn we can go Tome plus Inquisition or Cram Session. Plus something else. Put on to Ramps with Cultivate, so it might be a Sultai Ultimatum deck.
Then rolls a bit of an awkward draw. So I can cram session discarding Citadel in the hopes of drawing a land. Or I can cram session and learn for environmental studies to next turn search for a basic. I think I'm just going to have to draw land this turn, otherwise our combo is going to be too slow, I feel. So we'll just discard tendrils, keep double citadel, just in case they can answer one of them. And then we can inquisition. And probably want to take the Fae of Wishes. So the point sand's not too threatening right now, but of course they get to cantrip with the growth spiral and explore. Fae of Wishes could have searched for something like Graf Digger's Cage, which also shuts down Bolas' Citadel. So pretty important that we get rid of it. Alright, so now we can play Tome and draw with it. I'm gonna draw Main Phase in case we draw a Tap Land, so we can keep Awakening for next turn. Alright, that works. And then next turn we can cast Citadel. Opponent did find Emergent Ultimatum, unfortunately. So if they're playing the combo version that's guaranteed to win, we're of course dead. But we'll see. Alright, so... I don't want to give them Vorinclex plus Liliana. I can give them Vorinclex plus Nissa, which is gonna hit me for a lot of damage, but it's not gonna force me to sacrifice a bunch of permanents at least. Or I can give them Nissa plus Liliana, shuffle away Vorinclex, and then we take three and I don't really care about Liliana. Yeah, that seems better. Since I want to keep my life total high for the Citadel combo. And then, don't want to scry with Tome, we'll keep that for after we play Citadel. Alright, so we'll take three. Consumption only costs me two life here, essentially. Still play the Rogue. Play the Idol. And then we'll have to scry that to the bottom and hope there's some life gain next. Alright, crime session's good. And the next card down is Mindstone. So do we want to draw the Mindstone or do we cast it? It's only two life, but it's not a useful card right now. So I think we still just discard here. And there's a rogue next, so hopefully our next card is a tendrils. Hmm, soft consumption which we cannot cast. So we're probably dead here. Opponent gets to take an extra turn with time warp. So yeah, I needed to find a weather to store more tendrils in those few cards here. But sadly didn't. And especially with Time Warp, our opponent will have plenty of time to close out the game. Although, we're already dead this turn if they attacked with everyone. So it's definitely not a guaranteed win once you cast Citadel. Do need a bit of luck with the cards on top of the library. But especially if you have a few Maze Mind Tomes or Uncracked Mind Stones, you can make it more consistent. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Got a couple lands, a bit of ramp. Cram Session can also find more lands. Although we're up against Monorets, which is not a very good matchup, as you can imagine. So, probably play these off consumption tapped. Maybe we'll cast a rogue. And then we want to keep our untapped lands in hand. Play Guardian Idol. And then next turn we can go Mindstone into Crime Session. Chain World on 3. 
don't think we're casting Palaka Predation. So we'll go Mindstone into Crime Session, and we could get a sideboard card here. I think I just discard to weather the storm since we're probably not casting it this game. Find another Citadel, that's fine. And then play a tap Predation. Alright, next turn I can pay 3, play Citadel, hopefully we don't take too much damage here. Now the Light of the Stage finds Firebrand and Ramana Prunes. And we get to untap. So they could still have a Burn Spell or two in hand here, so we can count on them maximum having six damage in hand. So we'll have to keep that in mind when uh, comboing off here. Alright, Cram Session's a nice one. And then since we've already played a land, I want to draw the Swamp instead of keeping it on top of my deck, but our opponent already concedes. A little bit premature perhaps, but I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty mediocre hand featuring double storm card and no citadel. This one I can try and keep. And then put a cold steel heart on the bottom. Authority of the console, so maybe this is a nine lives plus uh, Solemnity deck, which we should be able to kill even if they get Solemnity nine lives in play. So, yeah, play Tap Predation. Cram Session can also get our Disenchant. Or maybe it's just a green white company life gain deck. Cold Seal Heart can name green. Opponent stuck on two lanes, so we stand a chance. So Cram Session probably gets introduction to Prophecy at this point. So we can go Mindstone into Cram Session and get some card draw to find our win condition. Opponent found a third land, Temple Garden untapped for a Righteous Valkyrie, so it is an Angel Company deck. So let's introduce some Prophecy. And don't want any of these Inquisition can have a look. And yeah, Raidan is probably a bigger problem than Skyclave Apparition. And then I can cast a Florahedron as a distraction. Apparition gets rid of Florahedron, that's fine. Another Inquisition might not have any targets left. Although it does set up Tendrils to gain a bit more life. Right, take a Soul Warden. Tendrils, and then next turn I might have to sacrifice my Mindstone. To find Citadel at long last. Resplendent Angel. Okay. Alright, Maze Mind Tome is good too. So I can play Tome and draw before deciding what to do with Mindstone. Weather the Storm, which I can cast. And then I might Scry with my Tome. If I scry and top deck citadel, I can cast it. 
If I draw with Tomb, that's not the case. Bottom Swamp. And another Weather Storm. Alright, so I can crack Mind Stone. See what's next. Another Inquisition, which is just going to increase my storm count. Alright, probably have one more turn to find Citadel before it's too late. Tendrils, not great. And an Agadim. We'll just play tapped. Alright, let's see if we're dead. Still no company, but a second Righteous Valkyrie. Put the opponent to 27. And yep, that does it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Zurda, the Dawn Waker deck. So what are we working with? I've got lands, crime session to maybe discard and draw. No citadel and also no maze mine tomb. So don't have a ton of card selection. I think we still try this. Since we are in a position where if we draw citadel we can cast it relatively quickly. Opponent with a Temple of Malice, Pathway, and a Thought Erasure. Well, at least her hand's quite redundant. So not having Citadel was not a disaster in this case. Takes Black of Predation. And we'll just play a Guardian Idol here. Even though Mindstone is more valuable to get in play, it also comes into play untapped, so we can maybe combine it and uh, cast a spell with the mana and generate if we find an untapped land here. Right, sadly, Braid kills Idol. I guess we prefer getting triple black in play in case they have more discard. Sir Point Grixis Control here, maybe a Bolas deck. And yeah, there we see the Ravager. Just double crime session here. One gets Prophecy. And the other maybe a mascot exhibition, which we're not too far from casting. Take four. And then we can maybe keep Citadel on top without drawing it. So we play around another discard effect. Although Braid can also destroy the Citadel, so that's potentially bad news. Alright, so... Cast Prophecy. And there's Citadel, so I want to keep it on top and draw the Awakening. Alright, so we're taking nine. Hopefully no counter spells, and then we can have some fun with Citadel. Takes two of Steam Vents, so they could put Zerda in hand and cast it. Alright, so... Can play Citadel and then want to keep Mindstone untapped since that could still come in handy if we find another Mindstone to potentially get rid of my top card. We found an early Tendrils. Would have preferred to find it in a couple draws, but still better to pad our life total here so we can keep comboing. And this can name. Green, sure. 
cram sessions nice and there's a tendrils on top waiting for us so definitely don't want to discard and draw and we'll go for doesn't matter too much sciences All right, sweet. So managed to beat the Grixis, the Zerda here. And yeah, opponent had a bit of interaction too with the Braid, the Thought Erasure. But luckily no counter spells for Citadel and we were able to get there in the end. All right, so this Storm the Citadel deck is probably not going to take Historic by Storm. So for the love of your wild cards, don't build this deck if you're expecting a positive win rate. But it's definitely a good time once you get to combo off with Citadel. Can potentially make some adjustments. I've tried playing some main deck sweepers and they can definitely be great at buying you more time against some specific creature decks. Although revealing a sweeper on top of your deck once you're comboing with Citadel is uh, not great. So you can't afford too many of those interactive cards. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.